Hey everybody, Lori Ballin here with Lori Ballin Team Las Vegas, Ballin Brands and RankLikeABoss.com. Today I am bringing you part two of our series, What to Do with Your Real Estate Website. All right, so in the first video we did a an overview, I don't remember what it was, a 45 minute or one hour video overview on all of the things you should be doing with your real estate website. Now we're gonna break down each one of those elements into actual uh, actionable items now that you can uh, either have your admin do or you can do or your partner can do, somebody on your team can do, uh, your intern, your virtual assistant, whatever it is that is leverageable, if that's a word, uh, you're going to be able to learn how to do those now. So on today's video, we are specifically going to break down how to build a community page. Now, the homes for sale pages are something different. They're uh, much easier, much quicker. I'm going to do those in another video. For this video, I'm going to talk specifically about how to build community pages. Okay. So for example, I'm on my brew here. This is my, my Ballon real estate website that my marketing company builds. I'm on the home page, And I've, if I scroll down here, what you're able to see is featured locations. These are what I'm referring to when I talk about community pages. So fortunately for me, let me cover this first. I'm in Las Vegas. And those of you that have already been following me know that I generate all of my business from the internet. So it either comes from organic search engine rankings, from pay-per-click marketing, from social marketing, from agent-to-agent -agent referrals that come through social media, but it's all generated from the web. Other than maybe the occasional when I'm speaking or something, I might get a referral or something right then, but usually it's coming through the internet in some capacity. Okay. Well, one of the ways that I do this is through these community pages and in Las Vegas, where Lori Ballin team is, it's really easy for me because we have these large master planned communities, okay? So for us, a large master plan community could be something like Summerlin, which is where I live. Lots of people think I live in Summerlin, the city, but Summerlin is not a city. It is a just a neighborhood but it has 100,000 residents in it. It's, a, it's over 40,000 homes. I don't even, I'd have to look now to see how many, how many little villages we're up to. So there's, I don't know, 20 something villages. And so when, when you're looking at things like that, it's really easy for me to take on this large area. Some of you, my community is larger than your city where you live. So I get that, okay? So what I, I, wanna, I wanna handle that first by saying, if you don't have communities, you're gonna go down into your little neighborhoods, okay? So some of you will have little neighborhoods that are very, very small. They've got less than 100 homes, less than 50 homes maybe, and there may not be as much to say about them. So what I'm gonna encourage you to do is cover them anyway, and so that you can at least put the IDX listings on the grid, and talk about whatever applies. Don't You don't need to add value to a page if there isn't any added value to add, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you through one of these community pages and you're gonna see examples of all of the things that I pull from and then you're gonna look at your neighborhood and see what applies with your neighborhoods, okay? So it won't be the same for everybody. For some of you guys, you'll, you'll only be able to do each zip code. And the zip code uh, pages I, are, are very similar to this. Um, I do have another video on just doing zip codes, but they're very similar concepts, okay? And so um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna encourage you to not limit yourself and, start, and think, out, think, think where you can go. Don't, don't focus on what you can't do. I see a lot of that. Oh, Lori, I can't do what you do because we don't have Summerlin. We don't have Master Plan Communities. Ah, I beg to differ. Show me a... And I'll go to Google and I'll pull up the area and go, okay, well, you do have zip codes. You have distinctive zip codes or you have homes around a particular school or you have homes that are considered north or northwest or south or whatever. Or you have specialty communities, age restricted and luxury and 55 plus or golf communities or gated communities or guard gated communities or condos, high rises, whatever. You're, you're going to do this in any way you possibly can in your area. Okay. And if you still, after all that being said, 
don't have any ability to do any of this, then you'll skip forward to the next video and move on to the next thing. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I, I also want to bring up one other thing today. Um, I don't think it'll be in this playlist series and I think it's really important. Uh, it's for SEO for ranking on the search engines. And I want you to keep something in mind. Google has, uh, if you're, if you're doing any of this to rank on the search engines, Google has a set of quality guidelines and a way in which they assign a quality score to content, okay, to your actual web page. And how you create your content and what is on the page from your main content to your supplemental content to your advertising on the page all plays into this quality rating that goes from lowest to highest. And if you're in the lowest category, and usually you're in the lowest category if you're if you're being if you if your website is deceitful, harmful, you know that type of thing is is in the lowest, or it's all duplicated content, nothing original, no added value, and the highest is just going to be the extreme. You're the expert. You have a, you have an authoritative website. You're you're uh, a trust you got a trusted website, and you're covering everything in full depth. Okay. So in order to get the highest quality scores, I want you to keep these initials in mind. They spell out EAT. Everybody remembers can remember to EAT, right? E-A-T. The first one is expert. Google asks, is the creator of this content, is the author of this content an expert on this topic? Well, this is another reason why we build out all of these community pages. And this is another reason why we do all of this hyper-local blogging about our area because we want Google to understand that we are the authority in our market. We are the expert. I am the expert. If you want to learn anything about Las Vegas, Lori Ballin is the expert. The website BallinVegas.com is the authority on the subject, okay? So expert is how... How proven is this author in this expertise? And proven is going to be based on past articles, references to your articles. Those would be called backlinks, right? Um, reviews and ratings that include information on that topic. You know, if you're trying to be the expert in real estate, you want to have a lot of mentions about you out there in real estate. Have you won any awards? Is there any news articles, which is another reason why we do press releases, right? There's a lot that goes into proving you're the expert. And the more you write on a particular topic, the more you make videos, the more images, and infographics, the more you create content that proves you as the expert, the better all of your content will rank, the higher your quality scores will be, and even that content will suddenly surface, okay? So it stacks, this expertise stacks. Authority is how authoritative is your website, this domain right here, how authoritative is that website considered? Okay, authoritative is going to be backlinks to this website from other websites that would be related to this topic, that would be credible sources pointing back here. So a lot of that's going to have to do with those backlinks and those references and those ratings and the reviews. So expert is looking at the author and authoritative is looking at the website and how on topic is that website for the topic you're creating. If I've got a website that's all about real estate and I sit down and add a blog about my keto diet, they're not related. So there's, it's gonna be a lower, uh, lower quality score because that website itself is, is not related to that topic, okay? And so far I may not be proven as an expert in keto and the keto diet, right? So it, it doesn't apply. So you wanna be very careful about making sure everything stays as topical and as focused, as laser focused as you possibly can, okay? And then uh, the T stands for trust. So how trusted is that website? And and these go this that goes for everything from having your website, if you collect financials and to having an HTTPS um, domain, having a SSL certificate to make sure that your website is um, is trusted, uh, you know, ex already your visibility with the search engines. There's a, there's a lot that goes into these things. So you're going to want to work really hard on, on being an expert, make sure your website is authoritative and that your website is also trusted. It's not hacked and it's secure and that it's got this past visibility. If you're brand new, you'll build all that as you go along. But I just, uh, you're going to hear me mention this a lot. And it's something I want to keep reminding you of because that's, how you get your content 
to rank higher. And that's why we do all the stuff I'm teaching you to do in this series and in the Rank Like a Boss training system. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, pick an example here. Let's take this Anthem Country Club. All right, so I'm going to break this down for you. And here's what you're going to see. Now, let me clarify something. My content is not always um, done the exact same way. I definitely create systems and processes, but because I'm always testing and measuring, you may come across one of my pages, of, uh, one of my community pages, and you'll notice it has a real estate market report attached to it, or it doesn't have an, a header image, or it's got a different style of header image, or it's got something else on it that this one doesn't. It's because I'm constantly testing and measuring. I do this every day. This is how I drive my real estate business. And I, do, I actually do the exact same uh, methodology for my marketing company business that I also rank on the search engines for. Same concepts, just different widgets, different items, right? And so don't panic if you look at one of my pages, if you look at this Anthem page, and then you go look at the Summerlin page and you see something different. What you want to learn here are the concepts. So that's what I'm going to go through. I'm going to break each one of these chunks down for you now so that you can get an idea of the concept, okay? So the first thing I have here, and let me see if I have, if I can shrink this down for you. Let me get rid of that uh, email there. I just want to show you the what it looks like on mobile without having distractions. Okay, almost there. Get rid of those. Okay. So this would be like a mobile view. I've got this kind of shrunk down to mobile. Now what you'll notice on mobile, watch what happens. If I have the whole page open, there is this dynamic pricing table that appears up here. And this is created automatically, and that's actually why the under a million should be over here and it's up here. That can be reordered. But it's created dynamically, alphabetically, or by order. And um, I haven't ordered that one any differently, so it's creating it dynamically. Now, you can see here that it's a table. Okay, if they want to browse by bedrooms, you, you get a new table. So you've got tabs and tables. Now, on the this is all done through the Brew website. These are the websites that I build. If you don't have the ability to build di these dynamic tables up here, you can actually use Table Press if you're using WordPress. And Table Press is a plugin where you can manually create these tables. I, I will tell you that it's a lot more time on task to create those tables. And it's worth it because I test all of my pages in heat maps that allow me to measure where people click and where they scroll and where they don't click and where they exit. And the most clicks on the page go to this widget up here. And that's just something we have set up in our theme so that that widget is on every page. And if I shrink this down, you'll see it's right up top. On some of my pages, that widget gets 84% of the clicks on the page. Super, super powerful. Well, the next main area that gets clicked is the pricing tables up here. Now, why is that important? Because it is a quality signal to the search engines when people are engaging with your website, clicking and taking action and playing videos and scrolling through images and things like that. But it's also a quality uh, item for that consumer because if they land on this page, however, through your Facebook ad, through a, a, a search engine search, However they get there, if they don't want to scroll to get to where they're wanting to go to, or they take a quick glance and go, hmm, not sure that's what I want, this gives them another option. So sometimes they'll just go up here and right away start clicking because they want to do their own customized search. Sometimes they'll scroll down here and go, no, I want to stay in Anthem, but I want to browse by price, or I want to browse by the number of bedrooms. And you'll see on some of my pages, I've only been building this website since August, so I have a lot more to do. Uh, but some of my pages, you'll see a lot more tabs because they're more built out already. And so you might see five, five tabs. And some of them, it's just one single drop-down menu. There's lots of options on the Brew site for how you get these to function, okay? So keep that in mind that if you have one of my Brews, one of my real estate websites, you have options on how to control these tables. Lots of different ways you can make them look and function. What you want to do is test them to see what works in your market and what people are, are liking. But I can tell you they work, they work. In the old days, I just used table press. Then I started building my own websites through my marketing company and I started making these dynamic tables. Okay. 
So let's move past that. So we've covered the widget in the top. We've covered this table, this table press table. And again, do not put a, a ceiling of achievement on yourself right now by assigning a limiting belief that says, I can't do what Lori does, so I'm not going to continue. I'm only using a website that doesn't, it will never allow me to add a table press extension or I'm not using WordPress, so I'm not going to continue. Don't do that. You, if you already have a website that you're committed to and you're building on, you take the elements I show you and work with those and leave the ones that don't work for you. Leave the ones that don't work on your platform. Just use what you can. Anything is going to be better than just leaving your website as a default. So keep going with me here and decide what you can do, okay? Next, you have, a, have an image. Now, this is something I'm testing. Let me show you a different option here. I'm actually testing images in several different ways. So you're going to see some different ones if you go to ballinvegas.com and go through my um, images here. Okay, so let me see if the Southern Highlands one's different. Yep, okay. So Southern Highlands, look at this. This one has no image, okay? No big image, no header image. And then I think I have others that have a header image that is the same as the page thumbnail. And so they're not a map view. Let's see what I have on Red Rock and Rose Ranch here. Okay, that one has no image. Okay, well, if you scroll through and look at my, some of them just have a big header image here that's kind of like a, looks like a living room or a kitchen, and then it just says up there, Rhodes Ranch Homes for Sale. So what I'm doing is I'm running these all through my heat maps right now, and I'm testing uh, which images actually people try to click, and if any of those images are distracting from the table of contents or the menu, I'm testing whether to put the table of contents above the image or below the image. So you're going to always see my stuff moving around. And then as soon as I, I figure out what's the best practice, I come back and share it with you. Okay. Here's what I do know. Uh, pages that have an image besides these IDX, an actual image on the page that you put on there. It doesn't have to be the header image, but somewhere on the page, there is a correlation between with, with SEO rankings, ranking on Google with uh, pages that have an image ranking higher than pages that don't have an image. And I'm sure that set, optimizing those images correctly and setting up your alt tags and whatnot so that you're, you're adding the description for, the, um, for people that can't see the image and such also adds to that correlation, okay? Uh, I'm testing these right now. What I don't like is how I'm capturing these map images are a little... Uh, pixelated. They're a little blurry the way they're coming out. So I want to find a better way to grab that image from our IDX maps. That being said, they are getting higher clicks and engagement than um, other images. Now here's the way I have mine set up, just in case you want to want to mimic this. So these pin houses on the map, everybody likes a lot. And what I noticed is if I try to do a, um, we use IDX broker. That is our IDX solution of choice. So that's how we show the grids on our, um, these grid of homes here. This is all done through IDX. And there's various IDX solutions out there. We personally adopted IDX Broker. We became IDX Broker developers and we've completely customized our IDX. And we're really happy with it. And um, here, there is a way to draw like a polygon map and make a map, but I don't like how large of a radius it has. Um, I have a developer request in to shrink that radius down and not show as large of an area because it's harder to show a community specifically or a neighborhood specifically. I want to be able to just draw the polygon and then how all the homes appear in here. Um, right now we can draw a polygon and we can have homes show up in a, in a widget or in a carousel, but not yet in a map of pinned houses. So instead what I do is I go in and I create a saved link in my IDX broker account which if you go to YouTube and type in saved link IDX broker Balan or something like that, you can see my video on how, exactly how to do that step. Uh, I might show you in the next, in the next video. But anyway, uh, what I do is I go over, I create that saved link or I click the little view more results. The map pops up and then I just kind of do a, um, a screen capture of the image. But that's what's causing it to be a little bit distorted. And I want to find a, find a better way or a better software to, to snag that image. But I do love this and people are clicking. And what's happening is if you click on that map, 
it actually goes to my link now that has the map, that has all of the pages on here, and uh, has the pinned map they can start engaging with, okay? So it, it causes the click, you get that little extra engagement, it goes to a new page, and then they start engaging with this page, and this is where your lead capture occurs, okay? So that's that's one way to do it, and I, I am finding success with this. I just wanna find the best way to put that image in there. If you shrink this down, this is what it looks like on mobile, just kind of to give you a little, a little bit of an idea. So I'm actually thinking creating a little more cropping in there would make those um, would make would look better on mobile because those little green uh, houses pin house prices would be larger. So that's something to consider. And um, maps on their own on mobile are a little bit trickier. So let me show you what it looks like here. I'll scroll that page down. Oh, on mobile, the map disappeared. I didn't even know it did that. On mobile, it map disappeared. Interesting. Because it is hard on a mobile device to really navigate those little tiny maps with the pinned houses. But on desktop, it's, it's fantastic. So just keep that in mind. I'm always thinking about mobile, by the way. Uh, Couple reasons. One, more than half of all users now performing any searches on Google are doing so on a mobile device. And mobile first indexing has now started to roll out by Google, which basically means the mobile version of your website will show first over your desktop. Uh, they don't want to see like forced apps. Like if somebody clicks on your website and they go to a forced app, they want to see them carry over to the same domain. Um, if they do a Google search. So if, if, if somebody does a Google search and they, they type in homes for sale in Las Vegas, 200 to 300,000, and they see my website results is ballandvegas.com and they click on it. And then instead of the domain opening, uh, a new, a different domain opens or a forced app opens, that's going to be a, that's going to be a negative when it comes to mobile first indexing. So there's, you know, things like speed or an issue. There's all kinds of things that come into that mobile indexing, but um, I'm always focused on my design elements and my speed and things like that because it's, it really does matter with this mobile indexing rolling out. So you'll see me often do that where I'll look at it and I'll shrink this down and I'll look at it. Oh, okay, that's what it looks like. So one example would be this first section here. This first section here, if you look at this right now, everything that we can see on the screen is considered above the fold. Okay, on a desktop, this is above the fold. Now, let me scroll down. Look at all the content you can see right now above the fold. You can see my About con Anthem Country Club. You can see my intro. You can see my table of contents and you can see some of the houses. That's fantastic because people are gonna start clicking and engaging. But look what happens when we shrink this down. Oops, hold on, there we go, onto mobile. Okay, now here's your above the fold. Now let's scroll down to kind of where we were before. Now you can't see any of those little houses. You can see this text and you can start to see, depending on of course what mobile device, there's all kind of, it's gonna look different on, depending on what you're on. Um, but if you're on a, a small smartphone, you might only see that top paragraph. If you're on a larger one, it might you might be able to see part of the table of contents. So it's really important. All of these sections you see here in orange on my, um, on my website here are clickable. And those are done quite intentionally. It's also very important that anytime you have a couple sentences or more that you break it up. So let me show you this. So I think right now this looks a little heavy. That text alone to me looks a little heavy. So what I would do is I would go to edit this or if I'm designing right out of the gate I'm gonna go down to that portion that has the anthem. Okay, so see here, it doesn't look very chunky, does it? It doesn't look bad, but it did look, look a little heavy on the text. So what I would do is instead is I would put a space wherever there's two sentences. So I'm gonna find the periods. There's one, there's one. Let me put a space right there, okay? Now let's go look at it and watch what it does. And you could put a space after one sentence if it's a long sentence, okay? So let me show you again what it looked like before. So there's that heavy, chunky text right there. And now let's go ahead and refresh that page. 
See, that little space right there just helps the eyes flow down the page a little bit, okay? Now, it looks like we lost a little bit of our table of contents, a little bit, but that's okay. I'd rather have the spaces there. In fact, I'd probably put another space after that first part. I also, if I'm measuring this in the heat maps and nobody's clicking on anything in that text, I'll move up my table of contents and put it higher up on the, um, on the page. Either put it up the very top or I'll take just this first sentence and then I'll put the table of contents after it. I wanna make sure that we're not causing people to bounce by putting too much chunky text right when they land, okay? All right, so obviously I'm talking to you guys about SEO and user experience at the same time I'm teaching you how to build a community page because what you have to understand is, there is a, there's a much larger uh, strategy here at play and so I want you to understand the why and what of everything I'm putting on the page that generates results, okay? Uh, right now, I have the number two uh, website in Las Vegas out of local um, local people, not including Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com. I have the number one website for the most keywords that rank or for the most keywords in the top 10, but I have the number two for traffic. But we are neck and neck. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm, that, I'm gunning for that number one spot. And because of everything I'm teaching works, because we're creating quality, we're focused on the customer, we're focused on the user, we're focused on the user experience, we're focused on value. As long as we continue to do all those things, we're going to be rewarded on the search engines. Okay. All right. So next, what you see here is this table of contents. Now, table of contents I found to be very important because when I'm creating a large page of content, now let's look at this real quick. So on desktop, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Oh wait, I should count those, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine scrolls, 10 to get to the bottom of the page. Now watch what happens on mobile. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, about 19 or 20 to get down to the bottom. Do you think anybody's going to scroll down that far? Very rarely, and I can tell you because I measure it in all of my heat maps, you, they hardly ever make it past the middle of the page. Okay? So what we give them is an option to shoot down to the area that they're actually looking for. Maybe this person's Googling Anthem Country Club because they want to sell a home. So I'm going to click on home values and I'm going to get, send them right down there to that market report and the option to request their own home value. Okay. And so if they're looking for amenities in Anthem Country Club, they can click there and shoot right down. And then what we have is this little divider here. And this is, uh, this is, this is built into our brew websites, but if you have a WordPress, you can use uh, short codes ultimate to create this divider. Or you could create, if you're coding, you can put it in there yourself. And then they have this back to top option and they can go right back up to the page. So no matter where they are on this page, they're only going to have a short amount of time. And this is way too many listings up here. I did want to tell you that if you're building a long page of content, these should really be about six houses. So I need to go in and change that. Oh, it is. Is it six? That felt like a lot of houses. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so it's the 15 grid. I don't mind that for pages that don't have content. I like to have, show tons and tons of houses because that's all they're going to look at. But if you have lots of content on the page, market reports and amenities and information about the neighborhood or weather or, near, or a map or nearby, it's better to just have like three to six of those and then let them click the view all results button. And the reason why is because what I just showed you, look at all those scrolls on the mobile. So I'm going to go back and change that one. That's an older page. Okay. So um, anywhere they can click on this back to top option and it will take them back up to the top section. Okay. So next on the page is these grid of houses, which I just covered. And in order to make these grid of houses, I just go over to my IDX broker account and create a little search widget. Now I'm going to show you how to do that search widget exactly on the next video because we're going to do the generic standard homes for sale pages without content on the next video. And I'll show you how to build these IDX boxes, okay? These widgets or these carousels. The next section on here, and again, remember, you might look at my um, 
pages, they might be in different orders. And right now, I don't know that I have a set order for the market report should be here. I do like the properties to be up top because if people want to click on houses, I want to give them that right away. Here you have a real estate market report. So this is going to be average price ranges. Now you're going to ask me how I do this. So in my case, you're going to have to find out what works in your market. I go to my MLS. So I log into my MLS account and I have a little saved search down here called my search with community zip and school. So what I did is I created a search that has homes listed by community and it has certain columns in there that I use on a regular basis. Okay. So this, this is, I, I'm sorry, this is where I get the information about the community on this particular page. Okay. So I would go over here, I would sort by community name. And then let's just say I'm, oops, I sorted by the, there we are, Anthem. Okay. So let's say I'm only going to look at Anthem and I've sorted to Anthem. What I can do here is I can actually add into my columns the agent to agent remarks, uh, the HOA information, whether or not it's gated or not gated or guard gated, whether or not it's horse zone, has golf information. And what I'll usually do is I'll just add a column in here. I don't save it because it has a lot of text in it. And that column, I'll just show you the example. So in my case, I just click here to add a little, there we go. I'm going to add a column to the right, insert column. And then it'll ask me what column do I want to insert. So in my case, I'm going to do the, let's see what the association includes, because that's where I get my information about it being gated and things like that. So association features available, click apply. And again, remember, you're not all going to be in Nevada, of course. So you're going to have to look at your own MLS and see what you can get out of it. Okay. So look what I have basketball court. So now I know that all my communities in Anthem, there's basketball courts in Anthem, there's jogging, there's playgrounds, there's, um, and I'll just kind of scroll down and look at what else, not age restricted. I might want to point that out. That's where this intro comes from up here. Located 15 minutes from the strip. It's a guard. It's a gated community with lakes. Okay. How else I get that information is I actually use maps. So I go over to Google and I type in, I type in Anthem Country Club, something like that. Now I can just, if I see the map, I'll go right over here and click on maps, or I can go to Mo, uh, maps right here, or I can actually type in Anthem Country Club map. Okay. There's lots of ways to get there. Well, this is the Google map that I want. So I click on that. And then I'm able to look at what is in the area and I can zoom in and watch what happens when you zoom in, you'll see new things start to appear on the map, depending on that area. Okay. So I'll kind of zoom in and around and go, okay, what are my cross streets? So, you know, this is going to be between Anthem Parkway and Anthem Drive. And the other cross street is Anthem Club Drive and whatever, something like that. And then I'll point out if it's in the east or the north or the south or the west of Las Vegas, the general area. I'll point out what zip code it's in. If there was a large like Anthem Hospital, St. You know, Rose Dominican Hospital rated number five is blocks from Anthem Country Club. You know, anything that would be a value add, something they would like to know. I don't put negative things in here. I follow the fair housing regulations. I don't use words like this is perfect for a family. You know, uh, singles love to live in this high rise. You know, we really follow those fair housing regulations. But I do look at the map and I, I really try to cover what is going to be important to them. But usually this little intro is, only, is two to three sentences. You don't want to get much longer than that on your top portion. If there's more to say about the community, break it down into categories. Okay, so look at this one, Rhodes Ranch Homes. I have about Rhodes Ranch, you see, and then I got a bunch more information. I have the information about the next door community by Rhodes Ranch. And I did that very intentionally. And the reason I added the next door community to this page is when I looked up on my SEO tools, where, what items people were Googling for Rhodes Ranch, next door was one of them, the social network. So I included it. So that might not be on every page of my website, but I included it on this one because my research told me it was important to people who were considering Rhodes Ranch or who lived there maybe. Okay, golf club, the HOA, there's information about that. So whatever I can write about that community, I'm going, I'm going to cover in that community, okay? Um, here now, 
I'll show you as we scroll down. Whoops, let me go to the front view so that it doesn't startle you. Okay, how do I get that chart? Okay, so now I go back over to my MLS. We were just working in. And I go up here in my case, I go to stats. And I'm, I know I'm lucky and hopefully you have something like this. This is fantastic. So what I'm able to do with stats is I can go down here and pull up my community name, Anthem Country Club. And let's say I only want to pull single family or maybe I want to pull all residential. It depends on how, what you're breaking down. If I'm just covering high rises in there or rentals, I'm going to pull it based on that. So I'll say single family and Anthem Country Club. And I want to go to customize and I'm going to pull up all homes, all sales in the previous year or the past 12 months, or I can do year to date, depending on how I'm creating this. And then I get to choose, I'm going to choose my median um, sales price, median, and then I'm going to group it by month. Then I'm going to hit generate. And what I get is this fantastic chart. I could actually just do a screen capture here and use the graph, or I can go over to the data here and I just do this. Okay, and I'll copy that and that copies directly this simple. I'll show you how it works. I'm going to go to a new post and I'm just going to copy this. Oops, let me grab a content block. Okay, and I'm going to copy it right there and it'll copy perfectly. Okay, then if I want to include the little disclaimer on there that Galvar has my board, I'm going to, I'm going to do this little thing here you know, what the time frame is or whatever. So there's lots of ways to do this. You can also sit and actually manually make your own table by using whatever content on the page you actually want to use. Okay. So I'm basically just getting the data and creating my own charts and graphs and then using, just pulling it from there. Um, all right. And so however you can get your data is how you're going to get your data. We don't have the sold data available here in um, Las Vegas. So I'm not using a lot of that. If you have that ability, definitely use it. It's very, very powerful. I'm hoping we have changes coming on that soon. Okay. And then if we go back to the front, I've got the amenities in the area. And then I've got, these are related articles. These are other things related to Anthem. Now, if I go back to the Rhodes Ranch one, there's a couple extras you're going to see in here. I have the IDX. Again, I'm going to shrink all of those down to no more than six homes. And then the about section, okay, that's, there's a little more to talk about in this neighborhood. So you'll see more. Now this video here, I did not make. But I have a license to use and here's how that works. If I go over to YouTube and I type in the community I'm after, Then I scroll down. What I'm looking for is a video that was not produced by another real estate agent because I don't want to be promoting another real estate agent on there. So I look down and I go, oh, well, this one's actually created by the creators of Anthem, the developers. And so that would be a good one. And I click on it. Then what I'm able to do is go down here and look at the share button. And if the person has allowed the embed option, you have a license to now embed that on your website. So you just go to share, click embed, and then whatever settings you want. So in my case, I turn off the uh, title and I leave on just to show or show player controls. And then you just copy this iframe and you put that into the code section on your website. I do have another video that walks you through that step by step and also gives you a few other options for how to put the video on your page. But this person has left the embed option on their upload when they uploaded their video. There's a little box, you check it or uncheck it. And if you it, you 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 do one to allow embedding and you do one to not allow embedding. Now you can't change this. You don't have the creative commons rights necessarily with this to go change the video or download the video or edit the video or re-upload the video, but you can embed it on your website and, and have that be an, a value add for your customers that are viewing information on the community page. Okay. I've got homeowners association information on this one. I've got the home values and then the contact us. So that's really all there is to it. Whatever you can say about that community. On some of my pages, they're new home construction. And so on those, you're going to see floor plans. 
You're going to see the breakdown of all the models. You're going to see information about who the builder is, how to buy new construction. There's all kinds of stuff on those pages. So you'll see a variety, but the, the, the idea is if you were, what you have to ask yourself is what is my goal for this page? My goal is to educate someone who doesn't know anything about that community, educate them about the community so that they can then make the decision whether or not that community is right for them to further explore, okay? Now, I do believe in de uh, the little demographic editions that have, um, oh, and I, we've begun adding schools onto all of these too. That takes me a lot more time. Um, let me see. Let me see if this one has the schools. I forgot to have a page open that has the schools. I know which one does. Hold on. We're going to go to Camden Park. So we just added this to our brew websites, the ability to add these three column content blocks. And I love them. It's still a little time consuming. So I want to, I, I still want to add some more shortcuts to how we create the content. But if I scroll down here to Camden Park, there's our schools. So we have the this breakdown of what the schools are. And on mobile, they stack, so it's beautiful. And it looks like there's the first school, uh, there's the elementary schools, there's the middle schools, there's the high schools. And for us, our neighborhoods are all zoned for a particular school, so it's nice to have that feature in there. For some of you, you won't have that ability because you have one large, um, you have multiple school districts and it's up to the real estate agent to disclose or whatever, so it may not be of, of benefit to you. Um, so schools are going to be another uh, potential addition on there. Also, on some of my pages, you'll see um, information about a workplace nearby, parks that are nearby. You know, if, if this is a community that's right across the street from Zappos, I'm going to point out point that out because people often Google things like homes for sale around Zappos, homes for sale around uh, the Knights Hockey Stadium, homes for sale around UNLV, homes for sale um, near Container Park downtown, you know, those types of things. And so if I'm building a neighborhood page that is nearby something like that, whereas it would benefit somebody Googling that, then I'm going to add this. So you have to ask yourself, what would be a valuable thing? Uh, where was I at? I forget. I was teaching in um, a real estate office not too long ago and everything in that town was based around the trains it was trains that went from one place to the next place and and you wanted to know what proximity of which train station or which train stop or however they call it that neighborhood was so everybody was googling the such and such train stops or homes near the such and such train and so your market's going to have things that are completely related to you but this gives you a really good concept of what a community page should look like, what kind of things you might want to add. Um, maps are another big thing, map of the community. What I find is that the Google Maps, if you embed a Google Map on the page, it's going to slow your, page, your website down probably. So I'm looking for other ways. I was mentioning the demographics earlier, and we're looking at some... Um, integrating uh, through APIs with a, a software company that provides the, the demographics and, um, you know, the things like what incomes, average income and things like that. I, I don't like the demographic tools that um, break the fair housing regulations, but there's ways to have, you know, have certain integrations and certain reports show that would be really beneficial and um, income is one of those that I like to show for a particular area. Another thing I like to show is rents, rents versus occupancies, so owner occupied, so that people can see if it's a large rental community versus owner occupied. Those are things that are that, that don't breach those fair housing regulations and are perfectly acceptable. Um, I avoid things like age, uh, race, f uh, family size. Like I, I'm not going to put the average family is a mom, dad, and two kids, you know, because that could, that could be a violation, but I might, I will put, there are this many homes. You'll notice this with my zip code pages. I do a lot of it. There are this many homes in this zip code and there are, there are this many people that live in this zip code. 
Now, if the person wants to figure out the math on that because they care about the familial status, that's up to them, but I'm not going to point that out. But I am saying there's this many homes. It kind of shows the size of the zip code overall um, when you can list how many residential homes are actually in that area and then the number of people to how crowded it might be, that type of thing. And so I, I do include those kind of demographics. And I just get them all from my MLS um, generally. You can also Google the uh, statistics and find a lot of great um, information out there that's public statistics. But I would just recommend quoting your source so that you're not the source of those statistics. A lot of them will say like last updated 2016 by the census, whatever census bureau. And you can just put a link to that or a link to the census bureau or um, a little thing in a parentheses underneath that, that says source quote, such and such to that, you know, and that's fine. So that cause because if you're not somebody that studies stats specifically, you probably shouldn't be the one quoting them without having a some sort of source back, okay? Now, a lot of this stuff I'm creating is still very manual. So to create one of these community pages, I'm going to give myself a couple hours to really get it right. But it's worth those couple of hours. One of the guidelines that Google looks for when it's deciding on how to uh, determine the quality of your page is it looks at effort, time, and energy. How, how much of those things does it look like you applied to this page? It's not actually saying, oh, well, there's only 100 words on this page, I'm not gonna rank it. Or there's 5,000 words on this page, so we should rank it higher. It's not about that when I talk about words on the page. It's how much effort did you apply to this page? How focused were you on providing value to that customer? The more of that you can answer, the more effort you can apply to the page, simple things like researching stats and adding those videos, the more likely you are to rank higher on the search engines for those um, terms. So that is how you build a community page designed for a quality user experience and a quality uh, score from Google to rank higher on the search engines on your real estate agent website.